Being, well, uh, for sure. I mean, we're, I'll be honest with you. David Feldman's already messaged me and said, Nick, what about this fight with Borkow? What about that fight with Borkow? What about this fight with Borkow? I said, Dave, I can make any one of those three fights happen. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights. Challenge your friends. Level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Okay, BKC Asia. That's your baby. Yes. Yeah, so initially it was BKFC Thailand, mm -hmm. as you probably, and everyone's questioning, well, wh why did it change to BKFC Asia? Well, I always wanted the continent. I wanted to run bare knuckle fighting championships around the whole of the continent. Uh, but we had to show David Feldman that we could do the job properly first. It was only after the second event he went, Nick, you've got Asia. So it's now BKFC Asia. Okay, <laughs> so before we get into a little deeper of the history, so since it's BKF Asia, your, your plans are to spread out to other Asian countries. Absolutely 100%. Already in talks with Philippines, Cambodia. We was actually supposed to run an event in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. I underestimated how, how slow the process can be there, so I drew it back to Thailand. But absolutely, and I even really, really like Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Myanmar mm. is a, a, <laughs> a beautiful place, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so you, you know, you hit my radar when you, uh, when you were refing. Right. right, you hit my radar when you were refing. You were refing during the pandemic, yeah. I believe so. Everybody's like, who's that Jack Ball dude refing <laughs> in the cage, right? It, you, you, it catches the eye, right? Yeah. And then I saw you refing at Fight Circus. Mm. Actually live, I saw you refing at Fight Circus. But then after that, it's like you went from the refing to BKFC, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. the main man, the big boss, man. Tell us like getting that started. Like how, what were like some of the obstacles? Cause I'm pretty sure there was obstacles getting that. You yeah. Know, situated. Okay, so it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, refereeing wasn't something I'd ever really planned to do. I've been in the industry f for years, like the fight game, MMA, uh, and refereeing was was pretty st simple for me. I went through the, the the training and all the courses, and I actually got a phone call from one championship. Said, would I help them out during the pandemic? I said, yeah, of course. So that's how that started. And then off the back of that, I'd get phone calls from John Nutt and other people saying, would you would you ref for us? And I was like, yeah, okay. I mean, it was never going to be a career path for me. I'm a businessman. I like to set up businesses, but there was not much else going on, so it was a great way to stay in, in touch with the fight game. And it was with John Nutt that I first experienced BKFC. And they run a small offshoot event using the BKFC rule sets. And I was in the ring, right? I'm a fighter. I was in the ring, and these fights are starting, and I'm like, holy shit, this is awesome. Like, it reminded me of when I was growing up in the streets back in the UK. I mean, we're, we're fighting bare knuckles, so I fell in love with it. And I contacted Mr. Feldman in America. I went like, dude, I, I, I've got to be a part of this. And me being a businessman, I wasn't thinking fighting. I'm thinking I want to bring the organization here. So that's how it, that's how it started. Yeah, and from there, many, many issues. It's not a registered sport. Uh, being a foreigner in Thailand, obviously, um, when you start to do well, when you start to stick your head above the parapet, then people start looking, hands come out. Uh, it's, yeah, there's so many different obstacles out to overcome language barriers I would be happy to tell you that it is probably the single most difficult thing I've done in my life getting bare knuckle off the ground in Thailand yeah and from what I heard even MMA when it was starting out and they're trying to get there was banned right for a long time yeah and I was thinking like man he must be going because watching it from afar I was yeah. like man he must be going through it right now trying to because Muay Thai Muay Thai this is the land of Muay Thai right they right. want to keep that sacred they want to keep it exclusive in many ways so once you started getting over those barriers um getting that first show started take us back there yeah john honestly can i just say thank you so much for understanding what i've been through because a lot of people they got criticism you know they criticize everything and you just even the fighters you i bend over backwards to, to try and help them and then they'll criticize you and i'm like oh, if only you knew what i've been through to get this far so thank you john mm -hmm. i appreciate that um so the first event, I had everything planned. I've been on the phone with David Feldman. I've, I've submitted my full proposal, a full business plan, a budget sheet, everything. I'd even raised funding. Um, and I was just waiting for COVID to, to subside because it was right in the middle of COVID when I started planning this thing. And literally the minute I had an inclination that we could run an event, mm. I set the date. And I didn't even know we could sell alcohol at the event because at the time that was not allowed. Mm. And I was winging it a little bit. I was like, oh, everyone thinks they're going to be having alcohol and, and but anyway, it all turned out well in that respect because I set the date. We were the first major event to take place in Thailand after COVID. And literally one week before the event, we got the approval to serve alcohol with the meals ringside. 
And I didn't tell anyone that we didn't have that until that point. It was kind of winging it, but it all, it all fell into place. But uh, we, we are obviously not a registered sport, so we had to run as an entertainment. Uh, fortunately for me, I've got an amazing business partner, Kun Golf, who owns the Royal Cliff Hotels Group in, in Pattaya. His mum's very well connected to the Chombury governors. So we, we got full approval to run the event and it, it, it was an absolute storm. It went really well, the first event. Mm -hmm. And you've had a few events since then, but I think when it really blew onto the scene was when you signed Buakau. And, yeah. and you know, me as a, a, a person that watches combat sports, bare knuckle is, you know, much more brutal. It is more of the, the street fight yeah. aspect, right? And uh, I wasn't really like on it 100%. Mm. And, you know, and there's always doubt, you know what I mean? Even me, I doubt, you know, in MMA, the yeah. business, the fight business is, yeah. it's a circus, right? Yeah. It's Wild West. So, yeah, I doubt a lot of things as well. But once you got Buakau in there, because people, I think a lot of people doubt it. Talk about that, yeah. like signing Buakau and then people saying like, oh, he's probably not going to fight. It's just a publicity stunt. Right. Okay. Again, John, this is why I love talking to you, man. It's great to have your, your deeper understanding of the combat sports industry as a whole. So the first event we ran, I was struggling to find fighters. I'm phoning fighters up saying, do you want to fight bare knuckle? They're like, what's that? And I tell them, like, no way. I don't want to fight that. So we, we struggled to get the fighters. A few people jumped on and they gave us a really successful event. Um, and it was actually more successful with the fans and the audience. The people that come absolutely loved it. And I built this business network around it. So all the local businesses come in, get VIP hospitality. And I built that as our audience locally. Plus we obviously get the pay-per-views online and, and funding from there. So the next event, I, I was able to up the level. But then people started talking about BKFC here and all the fighters. And I've got them contacting me going, actually, I want to fight on BKFC. I went, I asked you last time, you said no. They're like, yeah, I've kind of changed my mind now. So then we started getting better fighters, more exciting fights. Um, but for me, it's always been this. Now, there is that element of thuggery around it or that, that perception, um, bare knuckle. But here's how I see it. When the MMA come out, when you used to tell people, people say to me, what do you do? I'm like, I'm an MMA fighter. They're like, what's that? I'm a cage fighter. Then I go, oh, I know that. It's the terminology that yeah. gets people attracted. Yeah. So bare knuckle is a terminology that gets people attracted to the sport because of their perception of it. They think it's thuggery. Mm -hmm. When you come and see the level of our fighters and how, how skillful they are and how respectful they are, it's, it's changed people's opinions of it. And for me, I've always wanted to raise the level of the athletes and the level of the public perception of bare knuckle. So honestly, from day one, in my mind, Borkow versus Sanchai was always a fight I had. There was, there was never anywhere else I was going. Yeah. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Borkow was the first signing. Once I had Borkow, I knew I had it. I had the public's interest, the public perception, and I had that ultimate fight queued up, ready to go. <laughs> the, the first show I ever went to uh, was the Borkow. Right. The first bare knuckle show I've ever went to in my life right. was the Bulkha show in Bangkok. Oh, okay, his debut. Yeah, yeah. yeah his debut. Yeah. And uh, yeah, once I got in there and, and, and kind of experienced it live, mm. yeah, it is a different. Mm. It is different. Like the way you uh, set up the sound system right. is beautiful. Yeah. Like I, that's one thing that really stuck out to me. Like you could hear yeah. every shot. Yeah. And it's clean too. Like the sound, yeah. it was beautiful. But yeah, watching Bulkha fight the Thai Emery. Yeah. thing that happened right? <laughs> I got a lot of trouble for that but yeah yeah what, what like is there any, like wasn't that good though okay yes it was good I, I think Thai Emery is brilliant I think more the combat sports need more Thai Emery's mm -hmm. because she is just she's a great fighter she's a great athlete but she doesn't mind getting out there and just expressing herself and when she did it I was like oh but it went viral yeah. so it's good for the sport but I had I had been got approached after by the authorities saying that can't happen. Oh. That sheds a bad light on Thailand and blah blah blah. And I'm like, well, what, what exactly did you want me to do about it? I didn't, I didn't know it was going to happen, but I honestly embraced it. I thought it was brilliant. But I'm in Thailand. I respect the authorities, um, so we've made sure that that sort of thing won't happen again. But if I'm going to talk you off the record, and I don't mind you publishing this, I say, well done, Thai Emery, for expressing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, another aspect of. Uh, Bare Knuckle or BKFC is they do have BKFC in the, in the US, you know, that kickstarted it all off yeah. and all the fighters over there, you know, when are they going to start coming over? Like you got Ty Emery, you got Poe Den, Den, Denman, yep. yeah, who just recently won the title, yeah. like Paige Van Zandt, like you yeah. got so many 
great fighters over there that you could bring over. I think they would do well in front of the Thai audience or even in Asia, the Asian audience. Like, when is when can we see that? That's a great question. And again, that's something that's been on my mind for quite a while now. In actual fact, the Poe Demon versus Fanny Palumpi fight, Poe Demon was supposed to be fighting. Should we let that pass? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you could. It's all good on the mic. Oh, it picks it. OK. Yeah, yeah. That's, do you want to ask the question again? You can cut that, can you, or not? Yeah, just cut it. Go ahead. OK. Ask the question again. Oh, American fights. Okay, so that's something that's been on my mind for quite a while. Um, funny enough, the Fanny Palumpi versus Poe Demon fight was actually supposed to be Poe Demon versus the current uh, strawweight champion from America, uh, Britain Hart. Uh, Britain Hart actually injured herself leading up to the fight, so we had to swap Britain for Fanny, which turned out well as well. But that would have been the first um, crossover from the US to Thailand. I think I'm all about it, but I've got to make sure that the matches are fair. Yeah. And currently, I think we haven't got that many of our fighters that could compete with that level because yeah. our guys are very good kickboxers and Muay, uh, Muay Thai fighters. You put our guys in a Muay Thai fight against Americans, it's a different story. But when you're talking about the, the bare-knuckle boxing, for want of a better term, we've only got a handful of guys, I think, can compete at that level. But absolutely expect to see that happening next year for sure. Americans coming over, Brits coming over. So we're now in nine countries. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, I think the interest for the women yeah. fighting in bare knuckle, does it exceed the men, do you think? Or is it kind of even? That's a really good question as well. I think um, when, when we have women on the card, people, are, people talk about it more because they're blown away with how, yeah. how physical they are, how strong, how, how brave and aggressive they are. And I mean, I don't know if you saw the Suri Manfredi, Fanny Palumpi fight we had when Fanny won the title. It's one of the best fights I've ever seen. They were just incredible. So people are very surprised at how entertaining the female fights are. And they're, they're definitely, I mean, now people actually say to me, what females are on the next card? They want to see the female fights as well. So um, yeah, it's interesting. I think, well, Poe Denman, she is now ranked, I think, fourth uh, pound for pound in the world okay. at female bare knuckle fighters at her weight category. So if she beats Britain, she could go number one at her weight category, the champ, but she'll go number one pound for pound in the world too. This is pretty cool. And that's on box yeah. rec. You can mark my yeah. words on that. Yeah. yeah and, then, and she's like so unassuming as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> you look at her, you're like, she fights bare knuckle? Because I've seen her fight <laughs> previously before bare knuckle. Yeah. I think she was fighting Muay Thai, I believe, or maybe boxing or something. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when I and I met her and I spoke to her before as well, and I was like, mm. man, I can't believe she's fighting bare knuckle. That's, yeah. that's wild. But she's one of the best in the world now. Yeah, legitimately, which yeah. she is now. And, and I love that you said that too, because as I've told you, like, I'm. I'm promoting a sport, but I see the sport differently than most people that don't understand the sport. Mm. When you understand it, like you've been and you've seen how we, the production level we've got, the way we operate, all the safety procedures, the way the fighters conduct themselves and how they fight, we're not, it's not thuggery. Mm. And I'm trying to raise the level, raise the standards, and I'm trying to demonstrate that to the world and show people like, just because we don't wear gloves, that doesn't make us thugs. We're a very serious combat sport. Mm. Um, and when Poe Demon come onto the scene, I'm very impartial as to who, who wins a fight. I really just put the fights on and just hope the best person wins. But after Poe won, and then I see the way she handles herself in the media and the way she presents herself, I'm like, wow, can you imagine Poe Denman becoming a world bare knuckle boxing champion? I mean, she, she, she dispels the myths of what you would expect a bare knuckle champion to yeah, be. She's like Taylor Swift vibes, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like Taylor Swift walking around as the bare knuckle world champion. It's just completely out there, yeah. isn't it? But again, I think she's an excellent representation for the sport and I really hope she can do it. And now going back to Bull Cal, he recently fought Sanchai, a matchup that you had in your mind yeah. from the start. Yeah. And what has been the impact of, of that fight? You know, it blew up on social media, of course. Yeah. And But other aspects of the game, like what has it been the impact? That fight, I mean, Borkow's debut, as you know, was pretty big news. Mm -hmm. But Borkow Sanchai was news on a global scale. I mean, I, I, I got involved a little bit with the, reading the online comments because you know with something like that there's, there's people that love it there's people that hate it there's people that don't want it to happen there's people that can't wait for it to happen and you just gotta you gotta detach yourself from all of that but honestly that fight just changed everything I mean sponsors TV deals uh, fan base messages we get other fighters wanted to come on board I mean even a guy called Gabriel Varga who was the former Bellator champion I mean a multiple champion and he he's now on me wants to fight bare knuckle so I think it's opened up doors in every single area by having that fight. Um, I mean, a fight like that, 
was at one point people were saying was impossible all that done was made me more determined to make it happen so yeah yeah that that word was thrown around a lot right mm. they're like oh i don't believe that mm. you know what both those guys and, yeah. okay now bare knuckle or bkfc tie rules mm. that was the first fight with bkfc tie rules yes Am sir wrong? okay so what's the future of that because i think that to me is more interesting like right. you're taking that rule set and, and and utilizing that with different types of matchups different weight classes yeah so i took on the bare knuckle brand i love it i love the organization i love the sport i think it's amazing but look i'm in thailand and what i've got here is guys with like 300 plus fights in yeah. muay thai and i'm putting them in boxing matches which is great when they're at the same level but like i said if you put these guys against the americans that have been boxing their whole lives it's, it's not a pretty sight so i wanted to bring something that makes us competitive and, and not just competitive but the pinnacle of the sport so i spoke to mr feldman and suggested that we should run when we got borkow and sanchai why would you put them in a boxing match yeah. you're taking away all their best skill sets so um i said look we we, we should really consider bare knuckle tie we're not allowed to use the word moi the sports authorities have made that clear because we're not following exactly the traditional rules of muay thai yeah. so we cannot use the word moi but we are allowed to use bare knuckle uh, tie yeah. so that was a test. That was a test to see how many people liked that idea. Uh, it was Dave's idea to remove the sweeps. I really want to bring them back. I don't think we should remove sweeps from Muay Thai. I see the reasoning. The reasoning was when you sweep someone, you stood them up and reset them in a two minute round, you've lost so much time. Yeah. But I still think they're a part of what we should be doing. So my vision is to drive forward the bare knuckle tie, yeah. And then we'll bring in the Cambodians, the yeah, left way yeah. fighters from yeah. Myanmar, the Dutch kickboxers, the Americans, the Europeans, and the Thais, and we'll pitch them all off and run tournament styles and see, you know, each year and each weight category, who's the best. Yeah, it's like a World Series. A World Series, absolutely. And we're actually off to Dubai in December to discuss this with some very big backers, yeah. All right, sounds so what's this space? That's an exclusive, yeah, yeah, no one knows yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, going back to Bokal, you know, after the show, after he got his victory, um, he called out Conor McGregor. You know what I mean? What did you think of that? Did, that probably hit you out of left field too. Funny enough, that's what he's been asking for from the beginning. Oh, really? He said, I will fight anyone, bare knuckle tie, anyone. And he's not joking. He would fight even Mike Perry, who's just a monster at bare knuckle. But he said, if I could, because we asked him the same question that the, the, uh, the media asked. And they said, so if you could fight anyone, bare knuckle tie, who would it be? And he said, my ultimate fight would be Conor McGregor. But he also said that he doesn't think Conor McGregor's got the balls to fight in bare knuckle tie because he'd chew him up and he absolutely means it. So, yeah, and once once he released the uh, the article, it just, that went viral, it went yeah. crazy around, especially around the Thai media. Um, but will he, would, would McGregor do it? I don't think so. I think he'd bottle it. It'd be hard. It'd be hard, right? Mm. It'd be hard because, yeah, not everybody's built for no. bare knuckle, right? No. Uh, he has been to our events and he has oh, said openly sure. that he would fight bare knuckle yeah. my question is would mcgregor fight borkow bare knuckle tie yeah. that's the question yeah. um i don't think he would i mean he'd probably come up with the excuse ah oh, you couldn't pay me enough well we got backers in the middle east that might disagree with that um the question is would he do it i mean legitimately think about it as a fight forget all the other details around putting a fight on has McGregor got the balls to get into a bare knuckle tie fight with Borkow? That's the question. That is that is the question, right? <laughs> yeah. Does, I think he does. I'm just gonna put I think I think he'll you know if the opportunity is right, he'll mm. jump on it. And mm -hmm. we'll see, you know what I mean? Like you said, there's a lot of activity in the Middle East right now. Yeah. And they're putting on probably the biggest fights. Yeah. In especially in boxing, right? So, yeah. you know, yeah. you talked about it, you're gonna go out there and see what you can do. Yep. Maybe something can be worked out, I hope so. Well that's the plan. Yeah. And uh <laughs> If we go back a little bit, right, because um, Bukow, you know, he's had a lot of people call him out, right? Mm. He's, he's been famous for, I don't even know, what, 20 years, you know what I mean? Around the world, it's pretty Two insane, decades, yeah. right? So, Dave LeDuc, you talked about <laughs> I knew left that way. was coming, John. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Okay, go for it. <laughs> All right, so he's, he's a representative of left way, right? And yeah. he was calling out Bukow back in the day. Yeah. And they were, you know, they went back and forth. I think Bukow kind of, like, brushed it off. And, like, yeah. he didn't really pay too much attention to it. But I think... That's a major fight yeah. in bare knuckle. What do you think? Okay, personally as a fan, I love the fight. I think it's great. Um, I mean, who wouldn't want to see that fight? Yeah. But I do know, without going too much into detail, there are some um, political, political reasons as to why that fight most likely could never happen. Okay. 
even I don't think I could make that fight happen and I don't have any limitations in my mind, but there are political reasons way, way, way above anything that we control okay. that will prevent that from happening, which is a shame. But let's never say never, because mm -hmm. if anyone can, I can. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a very tricky uh, situation, that one. Yeah. Because David Duke's pretty outspoken. Yes. And he said some things about some people, which, you know, is completely relevant to me. It, it makes no difference to me. I like the way he promotes himself. But it's, it's been perceived as very disrespectful to a certain group of people in Thailand who have a massive amount of influence over Bork Yeah. Um, but hey, I mean, look, it's all about numbers, man. If, yeah. if we can see the numbers and people want to see the fight, then we'll see what we can do. Yeah, and you could pit it like he always wanted, you know, mm. Muay Thai versus Lethway. Yeah. And you're interested in bringing the Lethway fighters across and, mm. and having them compete in bare knuckle. Yeah, However, I would love to see it. Sorry, John, what I will say is David Duke can never come to Thailand. He yeah. told me himself, he can't come to <laughs> Thailand, he's banned. So the fight would have to take place somewhere else. But we, we've got open up now nine different countries. We've got the US, we've got the Middle East, we've got Russia. Uh, we've obviously got Cambodia, which is on the doorstep. So it wouldn't be a problem, even the Philippines. I mean, there's no, there's no issues putting the fight on uh, geographically um, other than Thailand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Bukau has to want to fight him as well, right? Yeah. It's not just about Dave Ledoux calling him out. Right. You know, continuously. And I think Dave just, he might have just had his retirement fight maybe, but, you know, in fighting, no one's ever really retired, right? You should know, right? You're a fighter. <laughs> Dude, I say all the time, my friends in the UK, they go, um, my last fight, my retirement fight. I'm like, how many times have you retired already? They're like, no, this is the first time. I said, well, then you'll be back. I, I retired twice, but yeah. Um, and it's not an issue of Borkow not wanting to fight the Duke, because I know Borkow would love to get his hands on the oh, Duke. Okay. That's not Borkow's decision at all at this stage, I can okay. tell you that. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah. And uh, Buakal, right, he's he's going to be fighting soon. Uh, probably when this comes out, he's already fought uh, kickboxing. Yeah. And they're promoting as like this was his last kickboxing fight. Is there a reason? Do you have any insight in that? Um, what can I say? Um, okay, so Borkal's at a stage in his life now where I get people message me all the time. I want to fight Borkal. I want to fight Borkal. Of course you do. Like, who doesn't want to fight Borkal? Because it, 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 it's a great fight to have. Borkal's at a stage now where... Like, pretty much like you just said, um, if, if, if the numbers are right, if the fight's right, if it makes sense, then anything can happen. Mm -hmm. um, but currently he's not seeing that the, it's going to make much sense to him in, in, in kickboxing. I mean, he's got um, an exhibition bout with Manny Pacquiao. I mean, he could get into a kickboxing bout and get a fraction of the price, or he can go and step into the ring with Manny Pacquiao now. He's at that stage of his life, yeah. which is why he wants to fight McGregor, because if he's going to do it now, it has to make sense. Yeah. So yeah, don't, we don't see many kickboxing fights making much sense at the moment, but that's my speculation. Okay. All right. Because I was my speculation was that Bukal is going to focus on bare knuckle. Right. Like that's his baby now, right? That's yeah. the new thing. Because their fighters are always chasing the new thing, right? Yeah. Until we're, nothing's left, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna ride off into the sunset yeah. the best I can. So yeah. you know, so we'll true. see what happens. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens next year. I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of things. Being, well, uh, for sure. I mean, we're, I'll be honest with you. David Feldman's already messaged me and said, Nick, what about this fight with Borkow? What about that fight with Borkow? What about this fight with Borkow? I said, Dave, I can make any one of those three fights happen. They're pretty big. They are pretty big. And yeah, in terms of bare knuckle, he's all about the promotion. He loves the way he's been treated. He's been very, I mean, working with him is amazing. He's a professional guy. So yeah, we're, we're not done with Borkow by any shot. Yeah, and Sanchai too, by the yeah. way. You okay. Know, I love Sanchai. Oh, one of the best ever, man. Yeah. Who's not a fan of him? Absolutely. Yeah, as a fighter and as a person. Anything you could give us about Sanchai? Like... Um, I can't actually at this moment, okay. unfortunately. But I would tell you, he obviously broke his finger in the fight against Borkow in the second round. Can you believe that Sanchai, at his age and the slight weight of disadvantage, went five rounds with Borkow? Three of which he broke his finger. Yeah. And if you watch, it was a straight, if he's, yeah, so it, was, it was a jab. He's thrown a jab and he's hit Borkow on the forehead and snapped his finger in the second round. Yeah. He still did five rounds of him. I mean, what an absolute legend. Yeah, it's not even in a glove. You no. just dangle it, you know what I mean? Like, you, the, the pain must have been crazy. Yeah, Sanchai wants to fight boxing, by the way. Mm. Oh, he's, just he'll do either, but he's okay. quite keen to do the bare knuckle yeah. boxing. Yeah, the, the BKFC regular. I'm pretty sure there's many people that would love to step in there with Sanchai. Yeah. Um, Bukau, let's go back to him, and, and you mentioned that there's been people reaching out to fight him. Yeah. Anybody that you could tell us, any names? 
Okay, so no, we're reaching out to the names that we want to fight with Borkow. Okay. But the people that are reaching out to us, there's loads of them. They, they're looking at Borkow as a quick jump up uh, yeah. in popularity. So no, in terms of the people we want him to fight, um, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to say it, John. You've come all this way to see me, man. Yeah. Um, whispers, this yeah. is not confirmed. Mm -hmm. This is whispers. Borkow Yilong, bare knuckle. You know Yilong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so that's a fight I'm quite keen on. We've, we have discussed it with certain individuals. It's been mentioned that it could happen. Um, we are thinking if it happens, it might happen in Macau, but it's not confirmed. Macau would be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's not confirmed. Yeah. I hate giving information that I can't yeah. absolutely follow through on, and I can't follow through on it this time. I'm the type of guy that if I say something, it happens. And if I'm telling you that it isn't confirmed, it means it isn't, it isn't confirmed. But it's a fight I really like. Mm -hmm. And I've already got sponsors and people very, very keen on the fight. Because it's Borkow one, Yilong one. Yeah. Okay? So let's settle this. Let's get this thing done. Yeah. I like it, I like it. <laughs> what are the plans with like events for 2024? Like, do, do you have a number of, of events that you're planning on having? What countries you're planning on going to that you can confirm? Right, okay. Okay, so everything in 2024 was heavily dependent on what happened in 2023. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Borkow Sanchai was a big, big risk for me. I put everything into it. And I didn't know if it was going to be perceived well. I didn't know if it was going to generate the numbers. Um, we have a meeting in December with the big boss, David Felwyn, to discuss how that went. Currently, feedback has been very positive from Dave. Um, he's been great. I mean, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to next year. I'm thinking at least four events in Thailand, but we are looking for six. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's depending on whether we can use the, the other venues I discussed with you okay. earlier. So we're waiting here on that too. So it's kind of up in the air. Definitely next year, we're looking at two in, in Dubai from our side. Oh. Yeah, uh, so that's pretty exciting. So currently, I would say we're at least four events next year in Thailand, two in Dubai, maybe six in Thailand. But by the middle of January, I'll release a full statement and a schedule of events for next year. All right. All right. The last thing is, who are you looking to sign in 2024? Who is like on the list of fighters that you want personally to be in that ring? Oh, that's a question. Oh, can I say? Because I haven't even spoke to him yet. <laughs> um, well, I've mentioned Yilong. I do want Yilong. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Honestly, I do want, I do want like, Dave LeDuc. Yeah. I do want Dave LeDuc. He has spoke to Feldman. I don't think they come to a deal. I haven't. I've reached out to him about a year ago. It wasn't a no, but there's work to be done. But I'm keen to see Dave LeDuc in a bare knuckle tie fight. I mean, it's not a great deal different to what he's used to. Yeah. We know what he's about, but it'd be good to throw some tests his way and see how yeah. he deals with some, some brutish Americans yeah. or some thuggish Brits. Yeah. But yeah, Dave LeDuc's an exciting prospect for anyone. And he pulls his weight in promoting. That's what's great about him as well. Exactly why I like him. Mm -hmm. I've said this from day one to, to all my fighters. Like, we had a press conference just recently and I've got fighters there and they're passing the mic around and they're like, what do you want to say to your opponent? Oh, I'll just wish him luck. Uh, I'll do my talking in the ring. <laughs> Fuck off, man. Like, come on, this is, this is entertainment. You've got, you've got to get people excited. Yeah. And if anyone does that, it's Dave LeDuc. For sure. I mean, he'll get people to love him. He'll get people to hate him. But the point is, everyone's going to watch, watch him. him. Yeah. That's the type of guy I want on my shows. I mean, how can you not want Dave LeDuc? <laughs> Thank you, Nick, man, for taking the time. And, My pleasure, uh, bro. Yeah, man, we got a lot of information. I think uh, people had a lot of questions, mm. and uh, I think we'll be doing many of these Brilliant. moving forward. John, I love your work, buddy. I appreciate you coming to see me today, and anything I can do to help you, just consider it done. <laughs>